in the offensive zone. Like, how many times do you practice this in a game? We used to set up in Portland, we'd set up exactly the same clip as you see here. I'd have five guys in the zone. I'd have two, or three offensive guys would be here like this. Okay? Pass the puck to him, shot. And we'd have one guy with a puck right there. Our 2D were here, so the five guys are working together and there's one guy with a puck. Simple, simple drill. Simple drill. So we pass the puck to our team. We take a shot. As soon as that happens, I blow a whistle, this guy takes off. So what are those other guys supposed to do? Track hard, hunt the puck. So all three of those guys hunt this guy down. D's tight gap. So someplace in the neutral zone, we're going to get the puck, and we transition it 5 on 0 as fast as we can. As soon as that end goes, the other end goes. And it's just one guy. We would hunt one guy down. Looks stupid because there's never just one guy going on the attack. But I wanted them to get that mindset that wherever that puck was, they hunted down. And then they got good at it. They'd strip the puck. They'd kick it to the D right up. Or sometimes they'd just lift a stick and hook it and then go the other way. And it was only one guy, but it, but it was great for the five guys to have to work together. And you could have two guys, but it would just complicate the drill and you're trying to, trying to work on execution and concepts there. So in this final one here that we're working on our back check, okay, watch the guys hunt the puck from behind. Get a stick in on the puck. Hook the hook, not hook the puck carrier, but hook under his stick right, right here, watch. You get the puck in, bang. You knock it up, and we're going in transition the other way. Great play there. Okay. So this was Sid. Sid turns over the puck here. I don't like guys skating into sticks. I always we always talk all the time, every single day, about like stay away from the stick. Go to open ice. Don't challenge the stick. So through the neutral zone, our one rule with our players, we want to be puck possession, but they can't challenge a stick. So they can't go under a stick, through a stick. That that's you're not allowed to do that. So you have to do something with the puck. Here he challenges the stick. We lose the puck, but I want you to watch what happens after this. But Montreal kicks it up. Watch our back check. Watch Perron here, right here. Watch him hunt the puck, lift, doesn't get it, lift, 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 kick it. Now we're going the other way. And another, like, really simple drill. But we do it even at our level, just a, a shooting drill, a warm-up drill. We get our guys to come out of the corner to the blue line. The coaches stand there with a bunch of pucks. They just lift a stick, grab the puck, take off back, shot. So they come out of the corner. Coaches there at the blue line with pucks as if they're back checking. They lift a stick, grab the puck, take off, shoot. And it's just a warm-up shooting drill, but it gets the, their minds going that I've got to back check hard. And, and it's a skill to lift the stick, grab the puck, and do a tight turn back the other way and transition back the other way. So what Perron does there, you have to work on these things. You have, you have to develop that type of skill so that you can transition that fast. But first, it's a, it's a mindset. How hard, you, how hard he comes back. Like right there. It's a phenomenal job. And our other two guys, you have to give them credit because, you know, do you like their back check? You've got Downey and Crosby. Right there, Montreal's got three guys in the pitcher, and we have five. If I can circle that every night, they have no chance at the line. No chance to make a play. So team speed for me comes from the back check. Comes from the back check to transition. Okay. Last one here, St. Louis juggles a puck. We come in. Again, you look at the pitcher. We lost the puck here. It was sort of back and forth. They're opening the gate. We lose the puck here. But I like how everybody reacts to the middle of the ice quick. And we get right in between their players so they can't cross in our D. Turn the puck over. Hey, now, another big thing for the guys who know me as a coach, 
I'm a huge believer in our defense activating all the time. And their only decision is, if we've got good possession, you've got a green light to go right to their net, right to their net, and you have to go to their net. So on our breakouts during the year, we tell our D that when we break the puck out in practice, every time we break out of our zone, one D has to be equal to the puck by center. Equal to the puck by center. One D. In a game, the decision to go that far and that fast will be made on puck possession. But in practice, I want the habit of activate, activate, activate. Because if, if, as a defenseman on the breakout, if you, or tra neutral zone, if you wait and the play goes, you have, no, you have no chance to say, oh, I probably could have gone or I should have gone. You, have, you can't catch up. So watch what Chris Letang does on this play. So he knows the rule. Okay, we've transitioned the puck. Okay, is he equal? He's here, puck's here. Perfect, perfect. So now what's his job? He's ahead of our forward, which a lot of times happens in regroups and, and uh, breakouts. So what's Chris's job? On our team, it's a mid lane drive. We've got, he just reads possession. Is that guy okay? Is he okay? He's okay. There's no issue there. He's okay. So Chris's job is to go right to the net. And if you look at that, if you, you, you froze that like we have, and you'd say, that is a perfect offensive zone attack. Perfect. You've got a mid lane drive. You've got a wide guy with the puck. You've got a trailer in the deep slot. The only thing I would like to touch up, I'd like Perron, 39, to be wider in the right circle. I'd like him to be a little wider in the right circle. So for David, I would tell him, this is a perfect clip, but I'd like him to be in here. In case this puck carrier needs to shoot off the pad and spray it, in case he juggles a pass in here, you might collect it and leave Winnick with some space. I love it. I like Latang going through there. Okay. okay, one more thing. So we talk about stripping pucks. Watch Crosby here. You're just getting a stick on him. Getting a stick on him. Work him. Doesn't get it. So again, we're always evolving as coaches. That's what I talked about at the beginning of the presentation. The New York Rangers. We played the New York Rangers. Well, we played them uh, ten times, I guess, this year because of playoffs. But what they did really well, the Rangers did, they made a lot of indirect plays. And for me, I've actually never practiced a lot of indirect plays in practice where a guy takes off and you pretend like there's a co put a coach in the lane so he can't make the pass and you have to bank it to him like a pool shot. So the Rangers were phenomenal at it. Like they're always making indirect plays. They, they lay long bank passes so guys can skate into the puck rather than force a pass through somebody. So we talked about it. We started to build it into practice a little bit. And watch this play. This is a great play. And I want to do more of it next year because so many times you look, you look, you just can't make the play. There's somebody in that lane. There's a stick. There's a skate. So can you make it off the boards to a space where he can skate into? Can you make that type of play? Watch what happens here. Sid was the guy in the back check. We get the puck. He takes off. Okay, can we make a direct pass to him? No, we can't. He's breaking into this ice right here. We can't hit him. If we try to, Montreal intercepts, and they counter against us, and then we're in trouble. Okay, watch. And I know Sid is Sid, and he picked that up, but if you don't practice it, those little plays, he's skating for a puck, and all of a sudden, the guy banks it this way, so now he's got to find the, the bank pass off the boards, get it, and go in. You could do, uh, you know, when I look at things like this, I always think, how am I going to practice that? Can I design a drill to practice that? Well, to do that, it's, it's so simple. Like, we just did little drills at the beginning of practice where the, the guy would curl off the boards, break to the middle, the coach would stand in the lane, and then the guy would look to pass him and then bank it. The other guy would have to jump back on the bank pass, and then just go in and take a shot. It's a simple shooting drill. It's not overly complicated, but it's, it's a hard skill. A lot of guys missed it. A lot of guys couldn't check their shoulder, find where the puck was banking off the boards, 
And at our level now, that, that's not an icing at the NHL. So even if he missed it there, he could still catch up to it in the circle at our level or even in the end zone at our level. So it's a good play.